pretty similar to the back. Right on. Now I'm going to get stuck in the... There we go. I grabbed the light, so hopefully you guys can see better. The fronts had more preload on them. And just about two and three eighths inches and bandits directions say to start out with at an inch and a half uh, so we'll we'll try that see where the uh, ground clearance is when we set her down hopefully uh, it'd be nice if that's where they can ride because you know, if you have you know less preload on them you'll have more room for spring compression so you get more travel out of your so uh, out of your shocks so you'll have a better ride and Better handling when you're rock crawling and stuff. Uh, the front's pretty similar, except on the front. I use the same 17 millimeter nut for the shock bolts, but the bolt head is a uh, 15. Also on the front, you only need to take the bottom shock bolt out and you can leave the shock right in there. Specially designed uh, punch. I had to look at the band directions. They call that the spring divider. I couldn't think of what it was called. The front is a little more work as far as, you know, dealing with the preload and stuff because there's more preload on the front than there was the back. So you gotta crank them more to get them off. You need to crank them down. It's harder to crank them back down. Oh, phew. getting closer. Spring bolt. Now just like on the back, you got push up bump stop so that you can get that out of there. Spring retainer. Bottom spring. Spring divider, which we gotta reuse. Tender spring, the top. Now just go ahead and push this bump stop up out of your way so that way when you put the new spring retainer on there it's not in your way because it's a little bit thicker than that other one so it takes a little more room. But now we install the new springs.
which the springs come. I don't know what you can see. There you go. The springs come packaged pretty much just the way you need to install them. There ain't nothing in the top one except for that uh, crossover uh, the crossover nut. But like the back, I, I'm not running these until I decide whether I need them on there. So, there's that. There's the top spring. There's the bottom spring. Got your retainer there. And your other spring uh, pocket. I don't know what you call those, but it's on top. So, I mean, it's, it's really a pretty easy job. It's pretty self-explanatory. There we go. Screw in the, oh, yeah. you guys couldn't see anything I was doing. But anyhow, I was just putting the springs on just like the back. But screwing the preload down on these, you have to kind of hold on to the nut as you're turning the spring, or otherwise the spring just slips on the nut. Uh, it, it, it's easier taking the preload off because the spring will push up on the nut the way it's going and it'll just go. But, Tightening them down, it, it doesn't want to spin with the springs. So you kind of got to grab both at the same time. So. And so that I don't have to keep running that uh, top jam nut down, I just uh, measure from the top of it down to I get uh, just about an inch and three quarters to the top of the bottom nut and then I'll I'll run the nut the top nut on down and then get a better measurement from there because that that's only about uh, yeah. that's about an inch and three eighths there so 
And that's to the top of the bottom nut. So it's got to go quite a bit more. Unfortunately, it gets quite a bit harder once you start putting tension on it. about inch and five eighths. It'd be a lot easier if the shock reservoir wasn't in the way. I keep jamming my thumb into it. and a quarter and I still got another quarter inch to go. I'll be honest I didn't get quite a whole inch and a half on the other side before I gave up. It was, I was close. I'm with, it was seven sixteenths on the tape measure. I figured that was close enough because I wanted to cycle everything. I figured it would probably be some sag anyhow, so I figure I'll cycle everything before I worry about getting it exactly where I want it to be. Besides, I may need to crank it on down some more uh, to get the right height back up to where factory should be or find my banner nut wrenches. Oh, we're close. We're, we're just about there. Seven sixteenths. That'll be good enough for a break-in ride. And the front's got the same crossover dealio, and like I said, I ain't putting it on there until I'm sure I need it. If you were uh, yeah, tuning your suspension up to do some kind of high speed stuff, then yeah, you probably ought to put it in there and figure out where you need it to be. But. That's it on the front. So we'll button her up and set her on the floor and see what kind of initial right height we get. Guys, I realized as I was putting, boxing up the old springs that I, I forgot to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of the front springs but it was pretty much like the backs with you know uh, a lot less coils the bottom spring was bigger around than the fox springs but look at that factory tender spring there is only just a few coils there that it does any good and the rest is just basically steel spacer so these these new springs ought to be a huge improvement but uh, unfortunately I won't really know until I get a chance to 
get it on get it over to my buddy's on his i don't really have anything here that's got any kind of like whoops or anything but my buddy's got a section where uh you can do some high speed whoops and uh and i'll have to wait till the next time i go rock crawling to really get an idea uh of the difference but uh she's all back together i'm gonna set her down and uh take her for a spin and see what kind of ride height we got all right everybody it's been a few weeks since i put the uh bandit uh stage two springs on the or max and um got a chance to ride it around whip it around some uh some whoops and uh we did we loaded up the kids and they uh, were trying to find a find a spot that the lights weren't uh making a glare it's night out but um so we loaded up the kids and did some high speed running and so we'll go ahead and get some measurements first and then my thoughts so let's see we're sitting right about 14 inches now. I don't know if you get if it'll focus. Now I was bowing. I guess it's maybe like 14 and an eighth if you want to get real particular. Which I do believe they settled some because I'm pretty sure they were. Which, like I said, it's been a few weeks, but I'm pretty sure they were 14 and three quarter when they first put them on there. And I was thinking that this was like 13 and a half. And it is about 13 and a quarter now. So the front settled a little too. Uh, I could be off on what I thought the measurement was, but that's what they are now after riding them some. Um, my thoughts, definitely worth the money i got them on a labor day sale so they weren't that much uh in the scheme of things anymore um they definitely improved the ride they're much softer uh their website states that you know it'd be like a sport side by side feel uh i could see that uh, they are definitely better because this is the four seater and i believe they're a little stiffer than what the uh, two seater springs are and so it rides better with the kids in the back than it does without them in the back uh, but with that said i didn't put on the uh, spring collars that uh, the crossover collars that switch from riding on the tender springs to the main springs just because most of our riding is you know slow slow to medium paced trail rides and with some rock crawling and stuff in there so i wanted all the suspension travel and all the soft you know bump absorption from you know going down the trails over the rocks and stuff so i didn't put them on for that i do feel like if you're going to be doing more high speed driving especially with a load on uh you're going to want to put those in there because uh, this has got the stock 29s on it and uh, we have a little off camber spot back in the woods that is right before a big hill and we were kind of getting on it and um, it actually that 29 came up high enough it rubbed um, and so if you had a 32 on there it'd be rubbing for sure so uh, you guys have you know you just have to see how it rides for you but i think uh, if you got bigger tires or you're going to be romping it faster you're going to probably want to put those collars on there and adjust them so that you'll switch over to the main springs before they uh, squish too far but otherwise i definitely like them uh, if you don't want to spend the money i do believe just getting the tenders would be a huge improvement because the way those factory Yamaha R-Max springs were, the top tenders, it was basically like just having a big steel coil and no spring at all there. Uh, big steel spacer, I mean, not coil. So, it, you know, and then instead of having, you know, a dual rate spring set up, you basically only have just a single spring rate. So, I definitely am glad I put them on there and it was an easy job. So, I guess that'll be it for now.
anything comes up that uh, I don't like or feel like it it was a wash I mean the only the only thing is they could have give you just a little bit bigger sticker if they're gonna have that cool one maybe two because this is the perfect size to throw on the side by side if you want to do that but I wouldn't mind having a bigger one so I could throw them up on the wall or something just get my uh, get a wall of stickers up there because I mean that's the main reason why you buy stuff right for the sticker but anyhow until next time thanks for watching and we'll catch you later